Hey guys, so this is the review for GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it is the most common upper GI disorder in the United States. Uh, it is a backward flow of stomach contact contents into the esophagus. It is uh, definitely uncomfortable. If you've been pregnant, you know exactly what this is. So <laughs> uh, it is a chronic and persistent problem for a lot of people. If it's an acute short period of uh, time of inflammation, then uh, we're going to tell the patient that they have reflux esophagitis, um, not necessarily GERD. So uh, it's a little more long-term with GERD. Uh, the most common cause is excessive relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. And uh, it is uh, common in, oh, my cat is on the table. It's allowed on the table. Okay. So if uh, one of, sorry, I totally lost my place. One of the um, Risk factors is if you're overweight or obese um, or uh, pregnant, very pregnant, because of the increased intra-abdominal uh, pressure. Uh, also, GERD tends to be worse at night because um, you're laying in a supine position and um, more common with people who have uh, hiatal hernias as well. So... Uh, this chronic inflammation leads to hyperemia and erosion of the esophagus, which is why you're at higher risk of esophageal cancer if you have chronic GERD. Uh, we also want to check patients for H. pylori because that can cause GERD and or be a factor in it if we can treat the py uh, the H. pylori, then uh, we can get rid of the cause for the GERD. Um, the patient will feel better and not have to deal with it uh, down the road. But uh, also something we want to look at is if a patient has GERD, uh, another reason why they are prone to esophageal cancer is because of uh, the Barrett's epithelium, uh, which is the um, Tissue in the esophagus that, that grows back um, is considered precancerous. Uh, if that happens, it's the columnar epithelium. Um, so you end up with uh, the scar tissue, which can also cause uh, stricture in the throat uh, or a narrowing. So uh, it can make things worse. I have table 54-1 uh, circled. Uh, looking at factors that contribute to uh, lower esophageal sphincter pressure. So we want to avoid all the good stuff. So caffeine, chocolate, citrus, tomatoes. Of course, smoking is not good, but that's on the list. And then uh, calcium channel blockers, uh, nitrates, peppermint, alcohol. Uh, anticholinergics, um, let's see, increased estrogen and progesterone, uh, and, and, and also having an NG tube. So uh, we really want to educate patients on their diet. They need to have small, frequent meals, and they need to limit fatty, spicy, and uh, fried food. <laughs> so... Uh, also caffeine. I'm not going to make it through nursing school without caffeine. So I have GERD, but, uh, I actually control it with one of the drugs we're going to talk about. So, uh, they need to sit upright for at least an hour after they eat. And patients can also actually raise the head of their bed with little wood blocks or whatever. Uh, they sell things for that. And then, uh, you want to raise it six to 12 inches, uh, that incline really does help. They can also sleep sitting up on pillows, which for some people is not super comfortable. So raising the bed is a maybe a better alternative. They can also buy a wedge uh, to put in their bed. But uh, 
Definitely want to assess the patient for heartburn, atypical chest pain, asthma, hoarseness, pneumonia, uh, dyspepsia or indigestion, uh, nausea, and burping. Uh, some problems or complications you have with GERD. One is regurgitation because that puts you at an aspiration risk. It actually happened to me a couple times when I was pregnant. That's happened to some of my other friends who have been pregnant. <laughs> so... Um, you just wake up gasping for air because acid has gone down your trachea and it is so not fun. Uh, but uh, also uh, chronic GERD can give you dysphagia, so you, you have problems swallowing. Um, and then for diagnostics, we're looking at several different options. Patients can have a barium swallow. Um, I've actually had that. It is disgusting. So you drink this stuff that basically has the consistency of chalk and water, and it is is really gross. Uh, it's I. It was like two of these glasses of water, but not water. Obviously, it's this white stuff, and um, it just has this horrible texture. Um, and also warn patients their first bowel movement after a barium swallow may be white. Uh, and then uh, what you do is you drink this stuff, and then once you have all of it down, they take you in and they do x-rays. Uh, and it's it's pretty quick and painless. It's just the, the drink is terrible. And uh, so you can also have patients do an upper endoscopy or an EGD. I've actually also had two of those. They put you under uh, sedation for that. And uh, they just put an endoscope down your throat and check everything out. And if they need to do any biopsies while they're in there, they just go ahead and do them. Make sure your patient knows someone has to drive them home though, just like a colonoscopy. If they're going up the, in the upper part of the lower part, they cannot drive home. <laughs> so... Um, the gold standard, however, is something, um, I have no familiar familiarity with, but it's a uh, pH testing. So, um, they can do it in two ways. They can cast them through their nose and take a pH, uh, or if they want something more definitive, they can do the, uh, capsule that attaches to the wall of the esophagus. That was the video we watched in class. That was really fascinating. Uh, I almost wish they had done that to me just so I could see what it looks like, the results. But but you keep a diary of all of your activities and symptoms for 24 hours and the pH is continuously recorded. I thought that was just fascinating. That's awesome. And uh, pardon me, they can do any of those things and figure out what's causing the GERD and how bad it is and how they want to treat it. Uh, very rarely will a patient have surgery for it. Uh, only if it's pretty serious, will they do that? Uh, we definitely want to address a patient's pain. It is really painful. It's like the fires of hell coming up through your throat. It's not as bad now that I'm not pregnant, but Oh, it was really bad. Um, and then uh, compromised nutrition, because when you have it for a long time, you really don't want to eat because you're just totally uh, anxious about the pits of hell and fire and doom coming up your esophagus. Uh, so uh, really, we want to teach patients um, nutrition to avoid those some of those wonderful foods that we discussed in class. Uh, and uh, lifestyle changes, they need to avoid eating three hours before bed, and they need to be upright one hour after eating. Also, teach patients to um, chew their food, your stomach. I just tell them, your stomach doesn't have teeth. Like, chew your food pretty good. Um, you know, that does help. Uh, one thing that is in a box, I believe, on our, in our book is... Um, for elderly patients, you really want to push lifestyle changes because uh, one of the drugs that treats uh, GERD is a proton pump inhibitor. And if they're on that for a long term, uh, 
it can increase the risk for hip fracture because it affects their calcium absorption. And so we really want to treat them aggressively with lifestyle changes, diet, diet, and, um, you know, possibly weight loss if, if they are overweight too. Uh, also they can sleep on their right side. So I found that that is a little bit helpful. Uh, they can wear less restrictive clothing too. As far as drug treatment, uh, which is going to be your kind of go-to for GERD, uh, they can use three different types of treatment. We went over these in pharmacology last semester, but antacids, uh, histamine blockers, and proton pump inhibitors. Your antacids are going to be like Gaviscon, Maalox, Mylanta. Uh, a lot of those are going to be liquids or chewables. They're very chalky. Uh, your histamine blockers are going to be famotidine, like Pepsid, Tagamet. Uh, Zantac is also on that list, but Zantac has been in the news like crazy lately. It's been pulled off the shelves because it was increasing uh, some sort of risk for cancer. Uh, and so that's just horrible. Uh, the proton pump inhibitors are going to be like Prilosec, Protonix, your Zoles, Omprazole, Omprazole. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Protonix. I lived on Protonix and Zantac when I was pregnant. So hope that Zantac is not going to affect me. Um, <laughs> if a, a patient does need surgery, it's usually going to be a laparoscopic uh, Neeson fund duplication, the LNF. We discuss this more in our lecture on uh, hiatal hernias because it is a, a considered an MIS, minimally invasive surgery. Uh, I'll go over the laparoscopic Neeson fund duplication when I talk about hiatal hernias. But that's basically the one where they were keeping the stomach from going through the um, the is it the diaphragm? I'll have to look, but I can see it in my head. But anyway, well, we'll go over that later. Uh, one thing that is also done for GERD is the strata procedure. Um, and that is where they use radio frequency energy with endoscopy to decrease the uh, reaction of the vagus nerve. And so post-op, uh, I have a star next to that in my book. Uh, so we want to keep patients on clear liquids for 24 hours and then a soft diet the day after that. Uh, they also shouldn't have NSAIDs or aspirin for 10 days. Um, they can um, have liquid medications or they should try to have liquid medications if they're available. They can also use proton pump inhibitors. That's usually prescribed after this surgery, apparently. And also uh, no NG tube for 30 days because they're at risk for esophageal tearing. So make sure that your patient knows that they cannot have that uh, and their loved ones know that so that if something happens, they uh, will not do that to them. Also, uh, they need to contact their physician immediately if they have chest or abdominal pain, bleeding, dysphagia, shortness of breath, uh, nausea, or vomiting. Uh, that is pretty important. And then uh, oh, I think that's pretty much everything. So that's just a real quickie little review on GERD. A lot of people have it. Super common. Uh, if you have questions, you know, let me know or let someone know and then we'll post anything else we need to. But uh, again, basics, just stick to basics, guys. Uh, I think that's it. Anyway, let me know if I forgot anything and um, we'll move right along. Thanks. Bye.